Quality of service. Now in this video we will see the basic introduction to the quality of service and then we will see why there is a need for the quality of service, what are the different network issues comes and how to overcome that by using some quality of service. Now before we go ahead let's try to understand what is quality of service. So quality of service is a method of giving a priority to some specific information as it goes over the network. Like take an example, in my network, normally we have different types of traffic. You might be sending some Vivo IP traffic, voice traffic, uh, where you have some IP phones connected and you are sending that. And also there are some applications used in my network which are using some video conferencing applications. And also I have some data traffic as well moving in the network. Maybe your HTTP traffic or FTP traffic or some database, something like that. Now when they, when they go through the network, probably there is a possibility that when you are sending on the router, probably it is going on the link, now if there is a not enough bandwidth or maybe there is a possibility that uh, your FTP traffic, th there are some users who are downloading something and the users, now the FTP traffic is almost eating up all your bandwidth and maybe, maybe your voice traffic is not clear, your voice is not clear. Uh, the reason is maybe some of the packets are getting dropped and when you are when you are doing some video conferencing applications the video is not coming properly now these are some of the reasons some of the uh, issues you 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 get into if you have some uh, less amount of bandwidth available on the link now what we can do here is we can we can simply configure something like we can give a priority for specific traffic saying that if a traffic is coming with a voice or video that should be sent first and it has to stop all the remaining traffic or maybe we can define that the voice traffic should get a guaranteed bandwidth of, of 64 kbps on that particular link in case if there is a congestion due to low speed links and that can be done by using something called quality of service. So quality of service is a method of giving a priority for some specific traffic as it is moving over the network and we can define them in different categories and we can define, we can reserve some amount of bandwidth for specific traffic. We can define the priority. Uh, we can we can tell, we can ensure that any any applications like FTP downloads should not utilize all the bandwidth. We can restrict them by using some policing options, and that that's what we are going to see in these sections. Now, now before we go ahead with the more in detail of different quality of service mechanisms, which is which will help us in in improvising your network performance or giving the priority. Before we, do, we go ahead, we need to understand what are the general issues we have in the network. So network quality issues like sometimes, you know, the small voice packets has to compete with your FTP downloads and we, we need to ensure that some path, some traffic should get a high priority, which are typically your sensitive traffic like voice and video. And we, we never want any downtime for this specific applications. We want to ensure that some, some database applications, we need to ensure that uh, there, there should not be any downtime in accessing those, those servers. Now that can be done by, by ensuring that we, we can give some quality for different applications. That's what we do in the quality of service. Now there are now why there is a need you know what what are the general problems you have in the network like the first common problem is the lack of bandwidth so you might be trying to send some information over the network but the WAN link connecting between the routers is just two Mbps and in these two Mbps we need to ensure that we send all the traffic now if there is no enough bandwidth then probably it will also lead to the packets getting dropped or network getting congested. So first let's try to understand where in, in which scenarios you will have some bandwidth issues like take an example there is a user a sender is sending is connected in the LAN at a speed of 10 Mbps and I have a receiver or trying to access access the server which can support up to 100 Mbps. So probably when the sender supports 100 Mbps it will try to send at a speed of 100 Mbps but on the WAN link we just have 256 Kbps. So probably the router cannot process the packets at a speed of 10. It's going to 
a standard speed of 256 kbps and then maybe here 512 but at the end you will not be able to send and receive at the same speed so the overall bandwidth from from the sender to receiver probably it will be the least bandwidth uh, whatever we have so the maximum available bandwidth equals to the bandwidth on the slowest link so that's the maximum bandwidth you can send between the two devices or uh, in, in those scenarios probably we don't have enough bandwidth so the model bottleneck will be like we have the link which is just supporting 20, 256 kbps and you cannot send you cannot send the information more than that because this this link connecting between the two routers router one and router two you can just send at a speed of 26 kbps now the next possible thing now packet loss the second problem is the packet loss now packet loss generally happens when the router receives a packets and it will try to send the packets if there is uh, the based on the output queue the number of packets it can hold it will hold those packets before it send back again and if it reaches the maximum limit automatically it will start dropping your packets so that is also one common reason let's say if you have a voice traffic coming up and probably that voice traffic is queued and maybe due to due to the output queue is full then it is going to automatically drop your packets and when you're sending some important critical traffic we don't want that to happen so that is that is one more problem here now if there is a packet loss probably you will you will have some issues if you are on the phone call you will see the voice will break up because of the some packets are getting dropped because of the congestion if you're using some telephone conferencing applications the white and video will not be synchronized your picture is not clear again and if you are downloading some files from some publishing companies the files will be corrupted so when you download the file will not be complete so it says when you try to open that particular file it says as corrupted or maybe if you're if you're if you're attending a call center probably uh, they say that please hold on while my screen refreshes because when they try to refresh it will take some time because of the network congestions and these are the general problems you have in in general when in non commonly when we have some network congestions okay so the first one was lack of bandwidth packet loss even there is a possibility that your packets may get delayed now the delay generally depends there are different types of delays we have processing delay where the time taken by the device to process the packets queuing delay queuing delay is nothing but how how long because the packets will be queued before it sends outside probably that will also take some time depending upon the uh, output queue again and then propagation delay is is the time taken before it actually sends outside and these are all the things you know these are all different types of delays matters so when you're sending the information it will also take some time depending upon the uh, depend on different types of delays as well and then the fourth problem will be jitter now jitter is a one kind of problem where the packets from the source will reach the destination in different delays like normally if you are sending the packets as a steady stream the delay the from the source the source and destination between each and every packet you have some serial delay normally the common delay but if you have some jitter there will be extra delay here so jitter is generally caused based on the congestion on the network and the congestion can occur either the router interfaces or the provider or the carrier network if the circuit is not working properly now jitter again leads to some some extra maybe some unnecessary traffic including that so the packets not coming in a common streaming we call that as jitter now these are the four different problems we have with the network congestion and to overcome all these things we need to use something called quality of service now quality of service will ensure that whatever the bandwidth available based on the particular bandwidth will will give some priority for specific amount of traffic like we'll we'll say that if the voice traffic is coming and also your ftp traffic is coming will say voice traffic should be sent first before it sends the voice FTP traffic and we are also saying that FTP traffic should not utilize more than 64 kbps if it is exceeding it will automatically drop it or or reduce the priority something like that so we all we we do this we are efficiently utilizing the available bandwidth by prioritizing some specific traffic 
and that is what we call as quality of service. So probably the next section we'll see some different QS uh, tools which we use to make this possible. Just a quick overview on that, and in the in the later on coming coming topics we'll also get into each and every mechanism which is used to overcome these problems. Now in this video we'll talk about some of the QS mechanisms which can be used to overcome the network issues. Now majorly when when you're working in a converged network you have some voice traffic as well as a video traffic and maybe you have some FTP traffic. So there is a possibility that your FTP traffic may be utilized almost all the bandwidth available and maybe your voice traffic may get delayed or it can be dropped. And that's something we don't want. Now to overcome these things, what we can do is we can implement something called QS mechanisms, uh, which will ensure that we give some priority for a specific amount of traffic. Now the major problem with the network is the lack of bandwidth. Now the packets get dropped or delayed normally because of the lack of bandwidth or if there is no bandwidth there is a possibility that your packet get dropped as well delay and jitter these are the general general issues you have with with the converged networks now we'll see the different qs mechanisms we can use to overcome those things so the first one is classification and the marking now in your network we are sending some voice traffic as well as we have some video traffic or maybe your critical traffic like database traffic and some other traffic like FTP or HTTP traffic. Now the first thing what we'll do is we can classify the traffic as the traffic which is high priority traffic, the traffic which is a medium priority traffic and we can also classify them as a low priority traffic. Now this method we call it as a classification. So classification is a method of defining the different types of traffic in different categories so that we can we can define what kind of priority should be given for which traffic okay so that's what we call as classification and then the next thing what we can do is we can as they move over the network we can do some specific marking values with them like i can say that all the all the voice traffic coming should go with some marking of uh, seven numbers something we'll, we'll talk about marking more in detail in the next sections like whatever the video traffic coming should come with a marking of six or something like that. And as they go through the network, once it reaches the next device, based on the marking values we have, it is going to decide what kind of priority to be given for that particular traffic. So marking is a simple, it's like a coloring of the packets as a member of some specific network and it will be recognized throughout the network. So classification is differentiating the traffic like video traffic, voice traffic, a mission critical data or some signaling traffic, something like that. Now the next mechanism we can use something called congestion management. Now in the congestion management what we can do is we can define a priority for a specific amount of traffic. Like let's say you have a voice and video traffic and also you have FTP traffic coming and if both are coming and there is a major congestion in the network, we want to ensure that this voice and the video traffic should be sent first always. Let's say this is your voice traffic, should be sent always first before it sends all your FTP traffic. Or we can we can arrange them in a separate queue so that uh, it should not, uh, this will ensure that your voice or video traffic should always be given high priority and there is a very less possibility of getting dropped. So we have some different queuing mechanisms for that. We'll, we'll talk about more in detail on that, the different mechanisms, class-based, weighted field queuing, low latency queuing, we have different options. So here we are just getting into some basic introduction of those things. Now there's one more mechanism can be used called congestion avoidance, where before it actually gets congested and reaches the limit, and then it will start dropping the packets. Now before it reaches the maximum threshold value, it randomly detects and drops the packets which are low priority. So that's what we call as congestion avoidance mechanism. Uh, we have something called RED, random early detection, and weighted random early detection mechanisms, which are considered as congestion avoidance mechanism, where it is going to drop the packets before the network gets congested. And apart from that, we have some other options we can use like policing and shaping. Now policing and shaping are almost similar. Now in the policing what we can do is we can define the maximum amount of bandwidth or maximum number of packets that can be sent 
by a specific traffic. Let's say I can define a rule say that uh, HTTP is allowed to send to utilize the bandwidth of of not more than 64 kbps something like that or maybe 1 mbps and anything exceeding the 1 mbps will be automatically dropped so that's what we are going to define we are saying that we are going to enforce a limit for specific traffic like http i'm going to say 1 mbps and if it exceeds 1 mbps whatever exceeding traffic either it can be dropped or it can be again marked with some low priority traffic that is something we can do and whereas shaping is also same thing we can define a limit for the specific traffic and once it reaches the limit instead of dropping like in policing it is dropping instead of dropping we are delaying the packets and we are using some buffer we are going to store them in a the buffer and we are ensuring that it will send without getting dropped now that's what we call as traffic shaping we'll talk about this more in detail in a separate sections but in this section, we, we are just giving, getting into some introduction of what are the different QS mechanisms we have, uh, which will ensure that your high priority traffic should always get forwarded and your network, if in case it gets congested, in that case, we need to ensure that our low priority traffic and the high priority traffic should be differentiated and preference should be given.